Hello, Travis with Heggy here. Today we're going to walk through a calibration on a NORAC UC5 system. In this case, this display has already been set up, so I'm actually going to go through how to redo a calibration uh, in this one. So first off, I'm going to hit the wrench on the right-hand side here, then I'm going to hit my blue arrow to the right, then I'll tap on the wrench, and that top left button, the wrench with the arrows going around it. This is the one that I'll press to reset my calibration and then to go through a new calibration. So I'll tap on that. It'll give me a warning saying, do I want to continue to erase all settings? I hit the check mark to continue, so I'll hit the check mark in the top right. From there, I'll have to select my sprayer. In this case, a Hege. Uh, Hege Hybrid with AWR. So this machine has our Hybrid 120-foot uh, boom on it with active wing roll NORAG system. After I've got my model selected, I'm going to hit the check mark in the top right corner. The system will kind of restart here uh, as it'll load, and then it'll go through a couple of prompts. The first one, I want to make sure that the sprayer is on. Uh, it's going to let me know that the booms can move. I want to make sure that the booms are clear of any obstacles, power lines, people, things like that. I'll hit the check mark there. Uh, make sure that I have all boom functions. I do. I ensure no function between sprayer and boom uh, and boom carrier pads. Not an issue here on a Hege. I have my boom unfolded. Um, my hydraulic oil is warm. I've had the machine running here for a little bit, so my hydraulic oil is up to temperature. I always want to do this with my hydraulic oil at operating temperature. Hit my check mark again. Uh, make sure that if the system's a pull type, it doesn't apply to us here in a self-propelled sprayer, but make sure it's connected to the tractor. Uh, after the checklist is complete, which we've just completed, we'll hit that check mark to continue. So hit the check mark. System's going to go through and check all of the system components. In this case, it says proper UC5 system components uh, connected. Please proceed Please, please proceed to resume. Um, so all of the components, it went out and checked, made sure that it saw all of the sensors it needed for height sensors, roll sensors, all the associated modules. In this case, the control module, valve module, and input module. So with that, I'll hit that green check mark to proceed. You'll see the system defaults itself, so this is getting rid of the old calibration. Now I have to do my setup test or my switch wiring test. And so it says press left up. So on the control handle, I'm going to press left up. See my boom move that direction. Uh, now it says left down, so I'll hit left down. Then it'll accept that. I'll do the same thing on the right-hand side. So right up. And then right down. Now we'll do my center section. Up. And down. So my input wiring test has been completed successfully. Now I have to set my zero set point. This is where I need to set my booms to 35 inches. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to level my booms uh, as best as I can here, sitting in the cab. I kind of eyeball it and get to 35 inches. We'll talk through a little bit afterward how to go in and adjust those sensor heights to kind of fine tune that adjustment. Uh, but this will save me a little time in the video so that I don't have to go out and measure each one of these points. So we'll call that about level. I go ahead and hit the check mark here. Sensor set point set, detect, set successfully. So that said, yep, this is 35 inches. This is what I'm going to consider is 35 inches. Now my sensor detect test. I'm going to press and hold the check mark here while it does this test. Uh, we'll see the left boom go first. It'll raise up, kind of detect what sensors are there, see that value changing, and assign those to the proper location. So I'll press and hold uh, this check mark. It'll show me on the screen what it's doing. This portion of the calibration does take just a minute. So you can see I sense two. Uh, Sensors on the left. I'll continue to hold that check mark. Now we're going to do the right hand side. Got my two sensors on the right hand side. So it knew uh, in those five sensors, it had two on the left, two on the right. I knew to assign that last one into the center section. Now I'm going to do my hydraulic valve setup. One point here, I always like to be uh, idle up a little bit. So I'm actually going to put this machine at about 1,700 RPM or so, uh, provide a little bit more hydraulic flow to that system. Now we'll see the booms move a little bit more. Uh, again, press and hold that check mark. If at any time I need to release that check mark, 
I can do so. So I'll press and hold that check mark. First we'll see the left boom travel down. This portion of the calibration is where the system is fine tuning both the dead zones and the gains for the valve. Um, for a little bit more information, uh, you can go see the uh, NORAC overview video. I do go in and talk a little bit about uh, these dead zones and gain values, what they do, what they mean, uh, and how they can affect performance. This is the longest portion of the calibration, uh, so it does take just a minute as it cycles through all the functions, sees all those boom movements, uh, and calibrates everything. This step here, uh, where I see these wings move in a rolling fashion, uh, I will only see this on these hybrid 120 foot booms with active wing roll. Uh, on our 90 and 100 foot booms where we don't offer active wing roll, I won't have this step of the calibration where I roll these wings. Now I've got my configuration complete, means I've completed my calibration. Everything passed, uh, everything worked well. We got to see all the steps in the process. Now I can hit my home button. Brings me back to my home screen. You can see my current measurements here. Um, as I move the booms, those measurements change. Uh, one thing I always like to double check just to make sure, uh, I'll look at this value and then I'll raise, say, my right boom up. I'll see those values change up. Lower them, make sure that just my right values change. I do the same with the left hand side. And I see those adjust as well. So after completing my calibration, uh, I noticed that uh, some of my heights were a bit off. Uh, remember, I just kind of eyeballed that 35 inches at the beginning. So I'm going to walk through how to go in and adjust those heights uh, for individual sensors. So from the main screen here, if I hit the wrench on the right-hand side, and then the blue arrow to the right, and then the wrench here, and then the picture of the sensor here in the middle right. Now I've got all of my sensor positions. In this case, I noticed that the right-hand side uh, was a little bit high, uh, or sorry, a little bit low uh, compared to what I thought it should be. Uh, so I went in here, and without moving the booms, I looked at this value, and it said 26 inches. I actually went out there and measured it. Um, my booms actually get about 20 inches, uh, so I need to up this, or actually lower this. So I'll tap on it, and I'll enter in 20 inches, which is the actual measured height that I got, measuring from the bottom of the boom frame to the ground directly below the sensor. So I set that one to 20 inches, uh, and then my... Right inner one uh, still reads 26. Uh, this one's actually in a little bit of a dip. Um, so 26 is actually pretty close. I was actually right at 25 and a half inches when I measured that one. Um, so 
zero that one out right at 25. Again, I haven't touched or moved the boom at all. Uh, so this was those were the measurements that I took from the bottom of the boom structure to the ground directly below this, the sensor. Now that I've got those in there, uh, I can go back to my home screen, put that back in automatic, and see how that boom reacts. Obviously, I should see it a little bit higher uh, now that it thinks that it, it's at 20 inches and my set height is 30 inches.